Hey, welcome back to Conjured Craft. Today, we're gonna keep growing my army of custom Nurgles, and since last time I talked about the paint scheme for my Daemon Prince, I figured this time we could explore my methods of madness on how I sculpt these horrible, horrible things. And since I like short lists with eerily vague titles, I've divided this video into three parts. So grab yourself a cup of tea, maybe a snack, sit back, relax, and enjoy some nurgly goodness. See what I mean about vague titles? This is the part of making that I always tried to skip, back when I first got started. Why do prep work when I can just jump straight into making things? Well, I think it's a good idea to ask yourself a few fundamental questions before you even get started with sculpting or building. A great starting point for me is the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. And that can be anything from what are you making, who is it for, what scale are you working in? Is this first sculpt maybe a bit too big? Maybe just a bit too big, Taryn? Maybe you should quit now while you're ahead? There you go. The biggest thing I ask myself before embarking on this project is why do I want to sculpt Nurgles from scratch rather than converting existing models? Well, to tell you the truth, I envision my Nurgles as one part demonic infestation to nine parts cosmic horror. So while I do love a lot of the GW Nurgle sculpts, and plan on using some in the next part of this series, for right now I enjoy sculpting things that make people say, thanks, I hate it. This part is a little wibbly wobbly. I certainly don't come up with ideas overnight, and I refuse to believe anyone who says they do. And despite popular belief, I don't take mind-altering substances to come up with these terrors. I usually spend a few weeks going through Pinterest looking for interesting art, which is at least somewhat more organized than what I used to do. I like to print out my ideas and have them physically in front of me. It's really easy to forget about a digital image or document. I found that having things in pen and paper keeps me focused and on task. Even just typing this script, I'm getting distracted by adorable cats on the internet. With everything in front of you, you can cut pieces into an amalgamation of what you're after. More easily trace and draw out your ideas, or just have a general mood board of what you want. One of the hardest things is letting this step get away from you. I usually try to limit myself to three or four references per creature or sculpture. If you have 10 or 20 different ideas, it's much harder to get them to work concisely as a coherent piece. Unless your intention is to make a giant gnarled mess. I'm not here to stop you. Live your best life. Something new I've been trying is creating silhouettes first and then working back into finer details. When I was designing my Beast of Nurgle, I knew I wanted it to look like a gorilla almost from a distance but thin spindly limbs that almost look like spikes. So I ended up just driving spikes into the back legs, but you know, you get the idea. Anyway, I would challenge you to create something starting with shadows first. You know I had to do it to him. You'd think at this point it's finally time to start building, but you can't make stuff without supplies. Remember those five W's from before? Well, one you can ask yourself is what medium should I work in, or what tools am I going to need? If this is a personal sculpt that's going to sit on a shelf, then I mean, by all means, just go for it with what you have. Or if it needs to travel and be handled in games, well, then plan ahead, it should be strong. If answering all these questions feels overwhelming, you might still be new to this and learning. If it sounds overcomplicated and unnecessary, you may already know your preferred methods and mediums. But the point is, is that different materials do different things. Wire lets you create thin gangly limbs and pose them accordingly. Aluminium foil allows us to build up mass for pennies. Sculpey is what I know best, and while I can sculpt quickly, I have to stop for bake time. Found objects give my pieces unique qualities that I don't have to sculpt at all. Epoxy sculpt makes things damn near indestructible, but it isn't cheap. 
These are all things I know from making a lot of mistakes. And even with all the planning and sketching and preparations, you will make some mistakes. Or change your mind, or just lose steam. So I would also add the archaic meaning of the word conjure. I would conjure you to take breaks as you need them because throwing yourself at a problem is a surefire way to never solve it. Eventually though, it will be done. Okay, so if you haven't noticed, I like to try something new with every video on this channel. From the style of shots, to adding title cards, sound effects, even just the way that I narrate. I've been making videos for less than a year, and I feel like there's still so much more I need to learn and practice. So if you liked something in the edit, let me know in the comments. If you like my Nurgles, hit the button. And if you just want to hang out for future videos, subscribe. And I promise, fingers crossed, Scout's honor, I will actually use a GW model soon, as soon as I can afford one. Anyway, I hope something good happens to you today because you deserve it. Until the next one, bye!